All right, I took notes last night, and then I fell asleep on my phone and forgot I took notes. And so the first thing I saw when I woke up was at the very top of my note list said still working. And I was just like, what the fuck does that mean? What I meant by that is they're still working on the game. Yes. Because that said the game footage, it wasn't final. It wasn't final, yeah. yeah. And, and it looks already better. It looks better, but like one, if they can clean it up a little bit, because I did see they had some jagged edges here and there. Yeah, some of the lighting isn't the greatest. Yeah, but... Um, in that cornfield especially, but yeah. 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 But as well, the, the so I'm just going to kind of run through what I got. And then, like, when we have points that need more talking, talk more. And then as well as, like, the battles. The battling looks pretty similar. Pretty standard, pretty standard Pokemon battling. Nothing mm-hmm. too overly crazy, which I'm happy about. I want, That's the mm-hmm. one thing I don't want them to change. Because it works the way it is. Yes. It's, it's nice right now, and I don't want it to be different, because that would be way too much. And then, um, the one thing that got that really, like, made me feel like it tugged at my heartstrings like game freak listened to me was the world was open and big like i asked yes. for it to be open and big and it's open and big i'm so happy yeah yeah that uh it feels like they listen to me too because we have control of the camera so like that seems really cool like that's a big step up in pokemon so i'm really yeah. excited about that um and just being able to like explore yes also, yes, I vape. No, my name's not Chad. There. Are you sure? It's not, I promise. It's Chad's game room, though, right? <laughs> yes, Professor, it's Chad's game room. <laughs> the thing that got Jeez. me, and I was surprised, I watched a couple people react. I didn't watch your reaction yet. I'm very sorry. I am going to. Like, no worries. After this, I'm going to go watch it, because I want to. But the thing, I freaked out. You can ride a bike on water. Yes! I was watching it's it. It's awesome. And I was watching it. I looked at my, my roommate who I'm watching it with. I was like, bike on water. He's like, yeah. And I was like, how is that the, mo- the most exciting thing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, well, first off, the bike is back. You going to be all right over there? Oh, yeah, I'm fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah, first of all, the bike is back. Yeah. Like, the the bike being back is huge. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I love it. It's It feels like such a staple of Pokemon. And when it was gone in Sun and Moon, I felt like there was something that was missing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, ride Pokemon is cool and all and, and stuff like that. And I love it. it. But the bike is like so – it feels so quintessential to the Pokemon experience and the actual like kid adventure experience. Um, I just like how they're justifying some of this too uh, with, with Rotom. Uh-huh. Like Rotom is able to go into all this different stuff. We've, got, we've seen three new Rotom-esque forms, right? Like with um, the camera. Rotom phone – the phone, the camera, and the Rotom phone, the Rotom camera. Yeah. The drone. And awesome. The Rotom, the Rotom drone, right? Yeah, the Rotom drone. Yeah. yeah. You went a little yeah, bit there's... robot-y there for a second on the Oh, yeah, drone. yeah. Sorry. Oh, that's all right. I don't think it's your fault. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the uh, Rotom drone was really cool. Uh, like, I just, I really like the, the almost the world that they're building up here. I think it's going to be really cool to, like, wow, this is, like, what Pokemon, the Pokemon world has always been meant to be represented as. Yeah, I think they just, they just always never had enough hardware to, to represent it the way they did. And mm-hmm. at least from this trailer and all the stuff about it, it looks like they took a lot of liberties, but they also kind of took... A quick like step back and said, you know what, we could put everything in here or we could just kind of test ourselves. And they showed probably a little bit of restraint, but they're still going to try and use the hardware, see where they can go. And mm-hmm. then, you know, obviously push it as much as they can. And then they can also add stuff in updates because now they're on a console that's always connected to the Internet where up- game updates happen. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, Breath of the Wild has a bunch of updates. So, like, why couldn't a Pokemon game have a bunch of updates? I mean, yeah, yeah. Um, and this has me excited, too, because if, it, if the game looks this good on the first, like, real Pokemon release on the Nintendo Switch, like, going forward, like, moving forward, like, it's going to be even even more. And I'm just like, whoa. 
Yeah. This I don't know. I had him on yet. Like, oh god. Oh yeah. You you more you, robotic. You went robotic, and then it all kind of just crunched together, and there was a bunch of chopping, and your camera. Went I don't know why Discord's crazy. having this. As well as you know, riding a bike on water and all the Rotom stuff, and that all being awesome. The thing that got me super excited was the raid battles, being able to have friends come mm-hmm. in and just go beat stuff up. Because I I played a little bit of Pokemon Go, I didn't play much. Because mm-hmm. to me, it got boring real quick. Just that's my own personal thing. I'm not going to say or tell anybody, hey, it's bad. Because, like, yeah, whatever. But, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> but the raid battles looked awesome. They looked great. And then adding the Dynamaxing into that raid battle just made it 100 times better. I like the way they've represented it, too, because um, I think a lot of people were worried that it was going to end up being like Mario Maker in terms of that you can only play with randoms. Yeah. Um, but this seems like you can do local and online play with friends, and if you don't have enough people, it'll fill it up with randoms, which is really cool. Um because that's, that's the way to do it. Pokemon never messes up their online. They know how to do their online for the most part. They uh, The only time I think yeah. they messed it up was with Let's Go and the code system, you know, like stuff like that. They 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 did do a little screw up in Platinum with with that um, area, that global system. They did a yeah. little screw up there, but that was, that was Platinum. That was their it first was, time doing yeah. it, though. That was the first time doing it without the um, link cable or anything like that. Cool, cool, cool. So where were we at? We just talked about raid battles and and discussed how those looked like they were made well. Yes. Versus the um, – sometimes they can have an uh, issue with that. And as well, here's the thing that's been bothering me. Of all the videos I've watched, a lot of people are mentioning how – are mentioning how, hey – like, you know, we know we like this um, online stuff, but Nintendo never does it right. And every time someone says Nintendo, I'm like, but it's not Nintendo's property. Yeah. And I that, that always gets me. I'm like, Pokemon has never been a Nintendo property. It never has been. It never will be. Game nope. Freak will it's never a give second it to party. Them. It's a second yeah. party group. It's Game Freak who developed the game, and the Pokemon company is their own separate entity. Yeah. Actually, yesterday I was surprised that the Pokemon Direct was on Nintendo's Twitch and not Pokemon's. Yeah, Nintendo is just their publisher, and that's all they are. And yeah. There was a there was a point where I don't know if you heard about this. I might have told you about it already off a of video. I think I have. But there was a point where um, Nintendo was going around and like taking down Pokemon YouTuber videos of small time youtubers Mm -hmm. (laughs) and claiming copyright on it and game freak was like we'll leave we'll cut this partnership right now wow if you ever think you're gonna take our stuff this isn't yours this is ours you publish it that's it and there was this huge thing it was all over it was the second time business insider actually did a video game coverage and the first time was back in the 90s with mortal Kombat. wow so this is the second time and Game Freak had put up a big thing. They were like, if you do this again, we're done. Because they've they've also gotten Microsoft has actually reached out to Game Freak, Ben, if you put it on Xbox, we'll give you these big discs and this much space and you'll get this much stuff with it. And you'll get wow. to use this hardware. And I was like, dude, it would be so weird, but I get it. I understand where Game Freak's coming from. They're like, this is our stuff. Yeah, it's you true. No, it's true. Yeah, you don't get to. Yeah, Nintendo doesn't get to grab it. Yeah, the Pokemon games are co-published by the Pokemon Company and Nintendo. Yeah, like the Pokemon Company is like the big priority because it's their IP, it's their property, their merchandise yeah. thing. You know, so that's their their brand. Then, um, Nintendo then, just has yeah. their their games on consoles. And then you're um, trying to also, and then Nintendo's trying to also fight Junuichi Masada, who Junuichi Masuda. My bad who has a incredible background with business already. Yep. As well as creating a company that almost went bankrupt, pulling it out of the mud by himself with only a friend in his wits and then doing great things with it. Yep. Like Yes, Nintendo is huge, but they could lose their biggest money maker 
if they decided to try and do that stuff. So that's why. I mean, yeah, yeah. That's why there was yeah. um. There's been such a such a uh, big. If you, I think it was about nine months ago. There's just been a rush of Pokemon videos, like it's just a huge flood of them instead of the regular ones that will usually come out like unlisted leaf and you and a couple other the regular pokemon youtubers they're there but even people who aren't there some small time stuff they just flooded because they were mm -hmm. because um game freak was like we love what you guys do yeah you yeah. guys make our games get bought like there's a reason yeah. why we let you exist we yeah, don't exactly. hate you because it makes sense yeah, it's it's free advertising for yeah. for the for the game. So why why would they ever want to lose that? You know, it's like when uh, YouTube took down my video of like when I put up a video for Sizzle Brasseria, and then YouTube immediately copyright struck it, and then sent them an email like, "Hey, someone's using your property." And then a day and a half later, it was back up, and I had an email from Bandai Namco saying, "We're really sorry. We didn't <laughs> want it to go down. Our bad." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I was like, oh, cool. Thanks. It's like, thanks, guys. <laughs> hey, do you mind sending me the next game for free? <laughs> <laughs> no, I did ask. And they said, unfortunately, no, we can't do that. And I was like, you got it. You got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he, and then the guy who emailed me, he's like, but if you finish Tales, maybe we'll think about it. And I haven't been able to finish Tales because I've been busy. But that's the one that I'm wanting to get back to. That, that would be a good idea for you. Yeah. Getting in with Bandai Namco is huge. Yes, but it would be hard because a lot of the videos are on Twitch, Twitch clips. I had to put them up there, so mm. I did copyright struck. And then my computer crashed, and I lost all of the footage. Oh, Everything's no. gone. So I was, I'm was, i just like, should I restart? Or should I start from where I'm at? And it's been so long since I played. I'm like, maybe I should just restart. And I'm, you know, I'm just going through that crisis. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> um... <laughs> No, don't worry. I am fine. Okay. It's just when I was at the convention. Ah, uh, you got sick. I, uh, besides that, I had gotten a cigarette rolling machine from a friend of mine. Because I do still smoke cigarettes. I'm trying not to, but it's an addiction. Mm -hmm. And I, so I rolled my own. And I have this giant box. I had a box like 200 of them. And within the five or six days we were at the convention, I basically think I smoked seven packs of cigarettes, seven or eight. Wow. And so I got, um, I got smoker's throat, which is not a disease, but it's just <sighs> your throat's destroyed for a while. And since I'm not smoking any cigarettes anymore, I'm just using a vape. I have to cough up all that shit out of my lungs. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Oh, God. <laughs> but it, it it is that is the that is the nice cough. The one you heard was the nice one. Yeah. There are ones where it gets bad. But I'm okay. Just wanted to make sure you know I'm all right. This That's is not, okay. This is not the first time it's happened. This probably won't be the last. Doesn't help. I have allergies, and everyone decides to mow their lawns. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> But we talked – okay, we're at Dynamaxing. Maxing yeah. up the Dinas, the big-ass, big boys, the real shonen anime style. <sighs> yeah. Fighting. This is going to be interesting. I'm um, excited for it, but I'm a big, like, DBZ fan and, yeah. you know. It's like I, I, I don't know how I feel about it yet. It looks really cool, and I'm, I'm excited to try it. Um, I have – Two really only one big concern about it, and that's the competitive aspect of it, mm -hmm. um, and how it's going to be involved in the the meta game. Um, for a minute, I didn't think it was going to be involved in the meta game at all. Um, I was like, oh, it it seems like it's only exclusive. It, it's exclusive to like the the max raid battles and gym battles. Um, and I think we got a clip of of the online play because there was a mo there's a there's a moment where uh, the female trainer Dynamax is something or whatever, and she's in a regular clothes and she's in an arena of some sort. Mm -hmm. Whereas every time we've seen the gym stuff at the moment, 
uh, they've been in like the in the soccer kits, you know, the the, yeah. the football kits. Um, so that has me believe that the Dynamaxing that Dynamaxing is going to be in competitive online, um, and that worries me a little bit um, because you know Mega Evolution and Z Moves have kind of broken the meta game a little bit, and yeah. I don't know if they're returning yet. I'm hoping that they're not. They don't return. Um, because they they really kind of mess things up and they're they're a little bit weird. I have yeah. a hard time believing that Mega Evolution won't come back because they spent so much time on the models and stuff anyway. I mean, I would I would be so I would be into seeing Mega Evolution come back because as far as it, it doesn't mess up the meta game, but the thing that it makes it is if you okay, so if you Mega Evolve a Pokemon and then you still have a good IV, good EV train, same Pokemon, you can still beat the Mega Evolution version. Of yes, it. and as well. I mean, you can go the the move I never use, but protect if you really need to. Yeah, protect priority yeah. move. Don't get hit. Since it is only like, I mean, it mega evolves for the rest of the game or just that one turn. Um, it mega evolves for the entirety of the yeah. match. Like once it's mega evolved, it stays that way for the entirety yeah, of the match. Right. Dynamaxing is interesting though because you you dynamax and they're around they're dynamax for three turns. Yes. and then they revert back. So that's going to be interesting. So we might see some protect stall in the meta game just because because of that. Protect um, and, and detect stall, like yeah, like that. We might see a little bit of that, um, and and we'll see. Yeah, I think we might see a little bit of that. Um, but I'm I'm also kind of hoping that with online battles and stuff, we get uh, a toggle even for the rule sets of of like no Dynamax, no Mega Evolution nosy moves like we could yeah. set settings up like that so we could have a pure pokemon battle without any of the gimmicks um yeah I'd, or, I'd be really down for that that would be really cool or the other thing that i i because uh when i did see that uh arena i actually had a different idea from from the online aspect i wondered what if the elite four in this game aren't an elite four but you have to go to an actual arena style battle and you basically do a tournament Ooh, because for me that would be I would like that. It wouldn't be a big tournament. It'd be like you know six people go up and then you two 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 and then it goes one 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 and you have one right. buy and then you fight the bot and then the buy winner fights you and then if you lose the buy winner yeah 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 but I've always wanted to see that kind of tournament stuff and even if it's not tournament for the elite four it could be a tournament somewhere because I've always yeah. wanted to see it. A traditional bracket style tournament in the games because you see him yeah. a lot in the show and you even see him in uh the pokemon adventures manga gold yep. and silver versions they had the big tournament bracket style tournament with gold and silver yeah they were on opposite sides and they have was... it in red and blue as well because uh, red blue and, blue and green yeah because yeah, oh, yes, red blue and do. green are they have the showdown and then the, yeah. uh also uh the masked a uh, person who has the Pidgey or whatever is oh, in the tournament. Oh, yeah, yeah. Who's that? Who turns out to be someone, but I won't spoil in case anybody hasn't yeah, read it. <laughs> don't. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to get those. I'm trying to I'm be like, Mom, hey, I have a birthday coming up. Spend 50 bucks on me. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And she's like, no. And I'm like, you got it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Here's $5. Go have fun. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. See... I don't know if we'll see an online bracket like with with like real people in the Pokemon tournaments for um I was for meaning like for the in, Elite Four. I was meaning like, like in like in game. Oh, tournament. in game, like an okay. in game tournament. I was gonna say because if we try to do Elite Four, but everybody who's playing the game goes into the Elite Four for the tournament, yeah. we have two potential problems with that. People cannot beat the game because they don't know how to do competitive battling, and two. Once time goes yeah. by, you won't be able to finish the game because not enough people are going to be online to play it. Yeah, no, I would um, like in the get like the actual in game, no, no online, but in game, in game, I can see that. Yeah, I can see that. Um, especially because the way they worded it, um, specifically with Hop, the rival, um, they said he's one of your rivals. Yeah. But they didn't show any other rivals. So I assume that we're going to get a couple more people that we're going to see and we're going to battle throughout. And we might get tournament style at the end yeah. with all four of them. If they're all good trainers, we'll I see what they're all about. I think we actually saw two of our rivals in it because there was a tiny little screen shot somewhere that I saw where you do – not a screenshot, but a, a bunch of people saying you might fight Sonya. 
I think we'll fight Sonya. I think, I think she's going to be a second rival. I think she is also, as I have it here, I have it written in my notes, Sonya is wife material and also seems to be pretty cool, but will, but will she also be a rival or a good trainer? Yes, to all of that. <laughs> yes, to, yes to everything. Yes, to everything. Um, totally waifu material. I actually have, uh, speaking of Sonya, since we're on her right now, I actually have a, a little theory that she's actually a bad guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, I do. Too. I don't trust her. I, I don't trust her one fucking bit. Not there, one she, fucking bit. She, there's there's a part of her and and the only reason why i say this is that they only ever make like semi-seductive trainers when they're like kind of bad because they're and they and the reason why i say this is there's a there's a specific moment in the in the trailer direct where she's like twirling Twirling her hair hair. yeah and i'm like that's that's hot (laughs) but not okay (laughs) but i don't trust you now i also don't trust leon I like I, I like don't. Leon. I think he's super cool, but I, there's something sketchy about but him. This is Game Freak. They said he's a great trainer. In the minute they say his charisma and whatever, I'm like, okay, okay, but listen, he's you... never lost. Uh huh. Okay, sure. Don't mm-hmm. you fuck with me, Game Freak? You know what you're doing. <laughs> I, I know what's going on here. But if they do it, if he is the, if they are the bad guys, I'd be actually shocked because they don't look like your traditional bad guys. No, it'd be awesome. It'd be, it would be so be, cool because it's such, such a, a good misdirection. And it'd be like what we talked about in our last discussion with yeah. the rival character having a a um a relative who is yeah. the bad guy and like a moral conflict thing. So I'm actually kind of excited to see if they actually oh do God. go about this route. Hey, that would be so good. That would be so fucking good. That would be so amazing. I mean, how cool would it be that the champion of the region is the actual like corrupt villain of the game? And I could see it. It'd be so simple to make and do and storyline it and throw it out there. Everything could work. It's all a big thing about televised events and broadcasting and, and yeah. everything and sponsorship. If anything, if he's not an evil team leader, he's affiliated with it. Yeah. He's affiliated with the evil team because his cape, the back of his cape apparently is listed with a bunch of ads. Yeah. It's all advertising space. Or or he is he's affiliated with the evil team, but he doesn't want to be. And he, he's like forced to. He's forced to. And he's like and let's Ooh. say Hop wants to go be just like him. And Leon, you'll see Leon throughout the game telling Hop, Don't be like me. Don't do what I did. Don't be like yeah, me. Yeah, don't do what I did. And oh my ah! god. Oh, it'd be so good. Cause they're putting a real emphasis on the RPG elements of the game and you can see yeah. it. Yeah. So immediately. And, and traditional RPG elements ha- – and traditional RPGs have darker stories like that. Yeah. They have stories that are like that. And I think they're really going to go all in on this. Um, and I feel like Sonya is is aware of it. And I feel like Professor uh, Magnolia is also in on it a little bit. She, like, knows something. Also, um, I want to mention – And when- has something to do yeah. with Dynamaxing. Yes. Oh, definitely. 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 I feel like – also, this is one thing I had. I feel like Dynamaxing, what if it was not a natural thing in any means? I don't think it is. It's an experiment that's I think so. going to go wrong. I think so. Yeah. I 100% believe it. Oh, hell yeah. Our, 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 boss, fight, our boss fight between the uh, final b- – between the evil team leader is going to be Dynamaxed, and it's going to yeah. be a corrupted version of his Pokemon Dynamaxed. It's going to be I, nuts. I 100% believe it. Um. <gasps> But I'm also happy that they used a magnolia tree because it's my favorite tree for Professor Magnolia. I like it. I like it. And then I was on Twitter and there was a bunch of people who were like, Magnolia isn't a tree. It's a flower. I was like, where the fuck No, but it is. Where do you think they get the flower from? <laughs> yeah, I was curious myself because I was like, Magnolia is a flower. And as, as I was on stream after I, the direct and I was going through it, uh, I, I Googled up Magnolia and the first thing that showed up was the Magnolia trees. And I was like, they didn't abandon it. <laughs> I was like, there we go. We're here. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure they grow into oranges. I think magnolias grow into oranges, but they take too long. And so the, the flowers die before they can actually grow because they don't grow in the right climate. Where we see them. I think, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah, that sounds cool. I, I'm into it. I'm into it. I know nothing um, about and that would botany. Explain, that would kind of explain why Sonia has orange hair. She's a redhead, and I think uh, I think Doctor, uh, sorry, not Doctor, Professor Magnolia, yeah, used to be a redhead too at some point. There's I'm there's also, part pieces of it. I also don't want to because because Professor Magnolia seems like such a sweet old lady, but I was having this idea when Sonya did the hair twirling. I was like, okay, but sometimes they the the evil rival 
the bad rival learns from someone. What if mm. Professor Magnolia is big boss battle? See, there's two things with Professor Magnolia that I really like. I was thinking that as well. Like, what if Magnolia is like the evil team leader? But also, too, um, Magnolia gives me very strong Professor Rowan vibes. Yes. Um, she's yeah. very much she very much <sighs> seems like the hard ass of the professors. Hell yeah. And I'm like, yes, let's go. And I immediately fell in love with her and immediately have so much respect for this woman. I'm and happy. I don't want to see it shattered. <laughs> I also am happy they get they gave us another female Pokemon professor, and I don't want yes. her to be the evil team leader. I really don't. I want her to be the person who comes in and is like, "You're fucking with my shit." I'll yeah, beat yeah. The fuck out of you. <laughs> she just comes in and just wrecks people. I I imagine that she because I think her research is on the dynamic uh the the Dynamax phen- phenomena. Yeah. Which means that Dynamaxing is a relatively new thing within the Galar region, yeah. um, and the world of Pokemon in general. That's what I'm 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 expecting. Um, so this is going to be something that I think we kind of go into is that she's very suspicious about Dynamaxing. I feel like Dynamaxing was something that was incorporated during the time that uh, that Leon was going through his journey, um, which I'm going to imagine was only a cut handful of years ago. Yeah. Uh, Leon and Sonya look like about the ages of red and blue, uh, red and blue from uh, sun when they were in Sun and Moon. Yeah. So I imagine that their adventure took place at the same time as uh, the events of Red, Blue, and Green, a uh, Red, Blue, and Yellow. Yeah. Um. So I can see that happening, and I think that'd be pretty cool. What What I also want to see, what I also really do want to see, is um is a uh, uh, um uh, oh god, it was here and now it's gone. <laughs> It was in my head, and now it's it's escaped. Um, fuck. Um, uh, that's the worst. Oh God, Dane, come on. This isn't this hard. It had to do with Sonya in the Sonya. Because uh, uh, we were talking about Sonya, Leon, so Magnolia. Get... Right. Okay. So I also want to see like when we have when Magnolia is like doing doing her thing. I want to know if – what if Magnolia, like, she she invented Dynamaxing. We'll say this. Years ago, years and years ago, she invented Dynamaxing with a different Pokemon professor. Mm. Now, which professor do you know that is interested in different things, interested especially in different types of evolution and in growth? Uh, professor Sycamore. Sycamore and – Ivy from the Orange Islands. Oh yeah, Ivy. I forgot about Ivy for a minute. Everyone does. <laughs> it's okay. I forgot. I forgot about what she like focused on. Like yeah. I didn't know what her she research focused was on because she was Orange Islands and she focused incredibly on the slow folk, the slow bro, how that works. Yeah. And so that's an evolution that doesn't make sense. And then Dynamaxing also is because you're taking a an, a, a, an animal and raising its body up and it's not doing any damage. That doesn't make any sense, no matter where you are. And Pokemon has always been like, in either either way, we still have nature; it still happens. Mm-hmm. Like, you can't just, you know, yeah, just, yeah, everything be fine. There's a reason for things that are happening. Yeah, and so I, what if she made it with Ivy or Sycamore or a different professor, and it went wrong, and then she was like, you know what, I don't want this research anywhere. Destroy it, and then someone got a hold of it, and so she's trying to do her research again fix her wrongs to fix something it'd be a deep story but it'd be something interesting that, it's something that i looked at and i was like this is a this is a stretch i'm not gonna sit here and say it's not it is a that is a reach but if there's just yeah. something similar to it at least or something she's she's connected with dynamaxing obviously yeah but there's a there's a i want to see a deeper connection than just researching it because there has to be more to it since it's so new yep Yep. See, like, the difference between, like, uh, Dynamaxing and Mega Evolution and Z-Moves is that Mega Evolution and Z-Moves, or specifically Z-Moves, Z-Moves were incorporated into the culture and they've been a- around for a very long time, according to Alola's lore. Um, Mega Evolution seems like it's only something that started kind of occurring over the past couple hundred years uh-huh. because of the, the war, the Great Fall. There was an explanation for that. Dynamaxing at the moment seems like it's an it's a weird phenomena that only recently started happening and it became ingrained in some culture because it got popularized and it seems to be that there's a big focus on media here 
with yes. there's a big focus on media and advertising and just all this like really weird sponsorship. And I feel like that's going to be they'll play a really big part of it is that these corporations or this corporation who's running is running the media is involved in this Pokemon corruption because they wanted to make televised events more exciting. They want to make gym battles more exciting. Yeah, and, and how then, do we make it more exciting? Bigger is better. And as I put in the, because I have the gyms are more like stadiums, and we've kind of covered that. But then yes. right under that, I say battles are over the top, and I love it. I do love it that battles are over the top. But yes, yes if the the more over the top they are, the more you get to see it. And then on top of that, I have two questions: Will you be able to watch your own battles? Ooh, and will you be recognized the further you go? Will the player That's be it. recognized as a like, hey, you're this a nobody. celebrity, and then yeah. like you beat six gyms or whatever, and then they're like, oh, it's this guy. Hey, you get a discount at this store, or hey, I know you. You were on TV. That'd like, be hey, interesting. I want to. I'd like that. I want to fight you. I saw you on TV. I could beat you. Yeah, and, like it just it would give uh, entire like. It would just give a much, um, a much better background to this. Uh, it makes you feel like you're a part of the world. Yeah. As as you go on, yeah, that'd be cool. I'd be into I, that, especially like if you're fighting like little kids, like like youngsters or or the preschoolers yeah. that that come by. They'll be like, oh, I saw you on TV. I really like your stuff. Let's have a battle. Can you teach me something or whatever like that, like stuff Let's like that. Have a battle. Okay, here's my Corviknight. It's level eighty five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Stuff like that, and I think that'd be really cool. Um, I didn't even think about that. Um, I was also thinking along the lines is that you're gonna have to gain sponsorships as yes. you, yes, like, like before you battle the gyms, maybe you have to get certain sponsorships, or you have Sponsorship to be able mini to mini game, <laughs> like fetch quests, even yeah. or like just little quests, like quest lines, um, Hell which yeah. would make the game feel less linear because it's like, well, and maybe you get choices of sponsorships, like, like maybe sponsorship routes. Like you can be like, oh, I want to support. I want to go through this company, or I want to go through this company, um, and become an advertising person for there. And maybe you get gear that like is like recognized with certain or labeled with certain like uh, <laughs> co company logos and stuff. So that goes into trainer customization like that. Yeah, maybe it's to, like RP heavy like that. You have to art. You have to tap the screen in order to promote Pepsi or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. You're like, I'm playing. I'm I'm fighting this gym leader, but I never start without a cold Pepsi. Yeah, uh, who's who's to say, you know? Mm. Um, but I'm I'm very curious to see how this is all gonna go, and it it just the world itself just seems like there's a lot to unpack, and I'm excited about it. It's not like all bare bones right there. Like I can't tell where we're gonna go. I can't tell how things are gonna play out. I know because with what so they've good. added, it's like it seems like it's yeah, it's, it's linear, but it also feels like we're gonna be able to go in a lot it, of different places. It's at added once. so many questions. Yeah. Like I thought when, when the direct was – when my, my roommate told me the direct was going to happen um, yesterday, I was like, okay, cool. I'm really excited for this. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. And when I watched the direct, I just noticed I had so many more questions. I thought I would have mm -hmm. answers, and I have so many more questions. One of the biggest questions I have, one of the top questions I have, probably the top question I have, will eight gems be finally fucking gone? <laughs> because we have the Corviknight, who's also the taxi that you could just yep. ride. It's a fast travel visit, system. That is fly, basically. Yep. Your bike transforms and becomes a water bike. That's surf. So that, that's surf. Um, and then um, my roommate actually said a really good idea where you get the little band that does the Dynamaxing. And yeah. you notice yourself, you're shaking a tree, getting berries out of. And it yeah. only happened in one other game, and that was... Uh, Heart, uh, gold, silver, and crystal, and then heart, gold, gold, silver. But he was like, what if – you'd probably need strength for that big tree. You'd probably need strength to shake that down. They'd probably use it in some way. What if Maybe. you have this band that allows you to use strength or use an ability where it's on it a It like band. harnesses the power of your Pokemon or something yeah. like that or whatever. That would be to, interesting. You don't need to have an HM horror or not be able to get rid of HMs and have to go to the move deleter to – get rid of them it, it definitely seems like they are trying to find ways to get rid of hms as a to as a whole yeah right sun and moon we had ride pokemon or rental pokemon the ride pokemon 
um, which was also slightly a barrier because it was basically just glorified HMs, but it was yeah. it was less so you didn't have to take up a move slot. In Let's Go, you had to use uh, learn secret techniques with your Pikachu, which again yeah. also didn't take moves, but it was still like you had to talk to this person to go do this. Yeah, uh, this might seem like maybe maybe it's similar maybe it's just places around but i'm hoping that you can still do certain things like with pokemon that you have yes. um instead of oh if i want to go from here to here i gotta go all the way to this town and or i gotta go all the way back to this town and and ride like the corviknight to go all the way down over this way you know and stuff like that uh so i'm hoping that we get still moments like like oh i could just go boop boop and i'm all the way over where i want yeah. to be or you'd be like me and be super stubborn and not use it anyways because I just want yeah. to go. Because, like, I play in Breath of the Wild, and I have ran from the one side of the map to the other side that I have open to get to something. And my my roommate's like, why didn't you just fast travel? I was like, because then I didn't get all these berries for whatever I got yeah. on the way yeah. there. I think that's going to be really cool. Um, and um, I think uh, we we found, because of the way the map is laid out... Um, and because of stuff we've seen specifically with like Leon, yes. I think we know where our, our elite four and champion fights are going to be. Yeah. Um, I don't think they're going to be in the North city. Like we originally thought. No, um, I don't think they are at all. Um, I think they're going to be in that center, that center plaza, that center that, tower where it looks like there's the crown and like the wings yeah, coming out. The big, big, big arena, the big castle yeah. thing. Um, I think that's where we're going to be for our elite four. Um, now and it would be really cool too because if the open area or the wild areas surround that city um then it's ever present you know yeah it's off in the horizon always present that's the objective that's the goal we're getting up there eventually and then you can like go to it and then you want to you know walk in and it, they're like oh you don't have enough badges or whatever to sorry go bud in. sorry you haven't done enough yet go to and then like because because if you any any RPG you play, I'm bringing it down to brass tacks. An RPG is a very linear game. I mean, yes. if you were to take them, I mean, Oblivion is a super linear game. But there's so much coming off of it that doesn't feel linear. That's yes. the that's the thing that I like about RPGs. Is it is linear. Yes, it's in a line. But it's but it doesn't it feel doesn't, that way. It never feels that way. It feels different. It feels like you're doing other things. So they could. You go up there like, hey, you go to, you got to go to this gym, and then the guy who's there is like, also, can you get me a potion or whatever? Just there's little side fetch quests that they need done, and then they could raise it up and raise it up and raise it up, and then make it more akin to like, hey, you have a Corviknight, um, show it, show it to me when it's level sixty. I want to see what it looks like. Versus, you know, someone be like, hey, I need to look at what this Pokemon looks like, or hey, do you have this berry? Because you could add in those tiny side quests that would just add that little sprinkle of of sweetness to the world. Because it just feels like you're interacting. Or it could be like, you know, bring me this Pokemon at level whatever, or bring me this berry, or bring me this item, or show me what this thing looks like. What this evolution looks like, what this looks like, yeah. you know, I want to see all these things. Like, it's just the little that, things that they tried to do in Sun and Moon, maybe even like, yeah, uh, throwing it, the Pukamuku back into the ocean, you know, yeah. it's those little tiny things. And it, it, a lot of game developers always don't look at it, but it's those little tiny details, those tiny little things that just sprinkle a little bit of sweetness into the world and it feels mm -hmm. real. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing is, too, like with things like that, like, if they are little barriers, it leaves it open to that you've already done it. Maybe you've already done it, and you can yeah. just go and proceed to do it anyway, um, which makes it more fun for, for like, it makes it more uh, uh, diverse and every playthrough feel different because, well, maybe I already decided I want to do this, and then I'm going to go see them and go do it um, and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Whereas, still, like... I do want to ask... Sorry, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, no. Where, like in like Sun and Moon, it'd be like, oh, well, here's this barrier, and you have to do this over again at this time. You can't get it done early. But I was also wondering, do you still want to do a sister playthrough of it? Um, I think we could do a challenge of it event yeah. like later on. I think at my first time through, I want to kind of go through by oh, myself no, and no, maybe no. do it on stream. Yeah, I'm gonna. But, I'm gonna um, oh, I'm gonna do the first. My first time through is gonna be on stream. It's gonna be three hours every day. I have to do it. I mean, I'm going to. 
just block off time because I want to mm-hmm. just it, either it'll be just me or me and my roommate, one of the two. He might actually be playing one of his copies in the room while I'm playing it in the you know playing it on the TV or whatever. Yep. But then I want to go into you know I wanted to do a sister challenge playthrough with you at some point with it. Yeah, no, that'd be yeah. cool. That'd be cool. I'd be down it for that. Be, it'd be so cool. Um, there's a, uh, um, ideally I think like, and this is something that I want to get into, right? I've been, I've been playing with self-imposed rules a little bit while playing through a Pokemon game recently on my own, like in my own spare time, yeah. uh, cause I want to play test it and see how it works. Um, and this is a mechanic I would love to see in the games. And I've, we've talked about it briefly, I think, um, trainer levels. Yes, yes, um, yes, 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 yes. So uh, Pokemon I, and I've been playing uh, a system called Pokemon D and D Five E. Um, so for P- anyone, it's Pokemon Dungeons and Dragons. It's it's um, essentially um, you get your starting level as a Pokemon trainer, and you're limited at the amount, the level basically that your Pokemon can be, and how many Pokemon you can have on hand at, with you at all time to- at times, and that only increases depending on the trainer level. Now, my yeah. idea of it and the way you level up in the in the Pokemon D and D Five E is between two ways: you either get battle experience, or you can uh, catch Pokemon. Um, and it's either one or the other of those systems, neither both. Um, my also other idea to make it incorporate into the games, um, so is what I do is I do gym leaders like badges. Badges set my new threshold um, yeah. and my new level. Um, and and I want to start doing that. And I think on my my channel at some point, uh, maybe my second run of it, I'm going to do what I'm calling the ultimate trainer challenge or the the uh, Pokemon Master Challenge, um, which will be restricting me on my trainer level. Um, so I can catch however many Pokemon I want, but I can only carry X amount on my party. And until I get certain badges, I can't um, I can't have uh, uh, them exceed certain levels. Um, with Nuzlocke rules also applied. So if they get knocked out, they're considered dead, and I can yeah. only catch the first Pokemon every route. So that way, my my playthrough is like very very tight, very challenging yeah. in that aspect. So I might do something like that. Um, you should definitely. I I'm gonna try and find it after this video, and I'm gonna try and find the Pokemon Tabletop RPG, the actual RPG itself that was based on D and D Five E rules. Yeah, and, the Pokemon Five E. And then send you a, a PDF of it if you don't have. Yeah, it. I have. The, I have the PDFs you know, oh, myself. Yeah, I, I would, uh, made by Joe the DM. Yeah, uh, yeah, they're they're super awesome. I've been playing that system over on Stella Luna's channel um, okay. every other week, uh, and been, it's been a blast. I've been wanting to play it, but a friend of mine, the friend I was going to play with, we had a bunch of shit going on. We both couldn't, and now he's in Japan, so I can't really do that. Ah, uh, yeah. lame. That sucks. <laughs> but he's um, living his dream, so I'm like, you know what? You go. Hey, you know what, buddy? Go for it. Yeah. Yeah, he's but, he's doing what he wants. So, but I'm trying to find. I'm trying to grab a PDF again, and so I'm gonna. I want to run through. the He's rules. updated it recently to incorporate okay. Generation Four Pokemon and such. Um, I think it's got four and five, but it might just have four right now. Um, but yeah, I think a system like that would be pretty cool. I don't expect that they'll ever do it in the games because they want you to do whatever. Yeah. But I would love to see trainer levels as a thing that you don't grind out. They're thresholds that automatically happen. Um, and they maybe encourage you to, and the only way be grindy is if you, if it's, if it's based off your Pokedex, yeah. um, and it, which encourages you to just catch more Pokemon, you know, I need something um, like that because I always find myself not catching things until the end of the game. And I'm just like, it doesn't feel fun for me. It doesn't a, feel fun. It doesn't feel trainer. like you're actually on a journey or, yeah. or like really catching, catching things. And I know people are like, but I just want to catch my six Pokemon and do that. And it's like, you can still do that, but you also can catch others and make yourself stronger. You know, yeah. as a trainer, as a trainer, you and to be a master, a Pokemon master, which is ideally the end goal to every Pokemon game, you should know how to be able to take care of every single Pokemon. Oh, one thing I didn't write in my rules, which I re- my notes, which I really actually do want to happen because it happened a bit in, in Pokemon. Let's go Eevee. Let's go Pikachu. I want to be able to send Pokemon to the computer, whether or not my party's full. Yes, because like if it's something I caught, I don't want it, but I still want to have it caught send to my computer so I don't have to worry about that thing leveling up before I catch the actual thing I need and having to grind that one out so with the rest of the party so it's not falling behind. Yes, yes. I think they're trying to do more where you can do some team management from 
from yeah. out in the field. Because in Sun and Moon, um, they started doing oh you caught this pokemon do you want to replace a party member with it already that you have or do you want to just send it to the pc um but that was when your box was full when or when your party was full yeah um and then let's go you caught the pokemon it would end up in your party and you you can just go into the pokemon box and send it there yeah Um, i think a system like that would be cool i'd be down for that i think limiting it like certain things that you can do at the pc so there's incentive to actually go to the pc yeah would be cool Like quick uh, but being able is, to team manage yeah. and stuff quick would be nice. is the only really thing I would want that's on the fly. Everything else I'm fine with at the PC. Just I want the quick boxing so I can just throw it to the box. Yeah. A Pokemon transfer system should be on the go. Yeah. Like you contact Professor Magnolia or whomever, and it's like, hey, I want this Pokemon, and instead of this Pokemon, can we tro- swap out really quick? Or, hey, I, I need this Pokemon. I don't want to hold on to this Pokemon right now. Can you hold on to it? And they're like, yeah, sure, whatever. Yeah. And they're like, you're, um, but I caught you're, it for, you're, for, this is the 16th Wulu you've given us. Yes, I need them all. <laughs> I need them all. I need all of the Wulu because they're adorable. There was a meme. It already, it like right after Direct, it, it popped up. And um, there was, it had a girl, I think it was a scene from The Office, but it was a Wulu that was been photoshopped in. Like, I've, oh, only yeah, had, yeah. I've only had Wulu for 15 minutes, but if anyone had ever heard it, I would kill everyone and then myself. <laughs> yes yes i saw that i saw that on twitter um oh as God. well as the uh the classic sid one or yeah story dropping Mareep and it's like i don't want to play with you anymore and they're holding yeah. lulu in the other hand yeah <laughs> i was like oh geez and i love it though one thing i have in my notes which i i do want to see this come out a little bit more is the practical applications for pokemon abilities in the outside world mm, yes so not just like using cut or whatever, but like actual like practical, but like someone who has sunny day when it's raining, you like use sunny day. No rain. Yep. Because like, there's dynamic weather out in the field now. Yeah. In the, in the wild area, there's dynamic weather. So that might be a thing. You can use sunny day. You could use sandstorm. You can use uh, rain dance, you know, I think also, that might be a thing. Bl- then, hail, blizzard. Yeah. And then like not, you don't get hurt it, like because you don't have a health bar as the trainer, but like. No. Getting like getting your um maybe getting your bag hurt during like the sandstorm maybe like it your berries go bad or one of the berries broke or one of the potions broke in your bag because of the sandstorm like stuff that is cheap to fix mm-hmm. nothing that's gonna ruin you but just things that but if you use sandstorm from a Pokemon you won't get hit by that you'll be fine it'll kind mm-hmm. of protect you something like that just something to a practical application for abilities because you see it again in the show all the time you see that yeah pokemon but. trainers are affected by the weather just as much as as the pokemon are yeah and um, then i could see that the wild area awesome that was just that was an awesome idea I, that that's like a great way to do open world the way that people have been asking yeah um you, you get still the, get traditional routes but you also get the oh the wild area yeah you get the best of both worlds Mm-hmm. And it adds everything that, that we got from Let's Go with everybody wanting um, Pokemon out in the overworld, like walking yeah. around in the overworld and being able... I don't know if we'll be able to catch the Pokemon that are specifically walking around because there's also tall grass areas in there, but I wouldn't be surprised if we could also catch the ones that are just roaming around, you know? Yeah. Um, I think that'd be cool. And then, um, will Hop be any good? I fucking My- hope so. My here's the thing. I really like Hop aesthetically and the way we've seen him so far, right? I think he's going to be kind of like how, but not exactly like how. If that makes any sense. Yeah. He's gonna be nice and re- he's gonna be nice. He's gonna be cool and respectable. He's gonna seem like a friend, but he's gonna be the guy that has a little bit of cockiness because he's like, the champion uh Leon's my brother, the champion's my brother. There's no way you're gonna be able to beat me. Like that sort of like yeah arrogance and he'll he'll be the guy that's like eh, well it was a fluke sure i'll get you next time uh-huh. good match though like he's gonna be like uh he's not gonna be like oh well you're a loser anyway like sort of guy he's not gonna be like that smell but he's you gonna later. yeah smell you later he's not gonna be like that but he's not gonna be like oh well i guess i lost that time well well maybe i'll get you next time yeah, who's to will. say We'll figure it out. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Like, he's not going to be like that. He's going to yeah. kind of play a middle ground, I think. Because he does look like he has that cockiness of, of like, blue. But he seems like he has the friendly attitude 
and of of how. Yeah. So like it's a mix of both. So I'm interested. I imagine playing maybe more along like akin to to Sharon from Pokemon Black and White. Yeah. Or Hugh, even yes. from Pokemon Black and White too. Um, he might play out like that. But who's to say? We haven't seen much of him yet. But from what we have seen, he says I really like him. I really like him so far. He dresses cool. He's he, cool as shit. He's cool. <laughs> he's just also, cool. Gyms are back. I'm happy about that. Gyms are back. Yes, I'm. I'm. I'm very happy about it. But what I'm wondering with the gyms is, what if they don't do traditional eight this time? Interesting. What if they go maybe seven or ten or nine or what if they use it up? What if they go with a different number? Because yeah, eight's cool and all, but. Just going from the advertising aspect, you'd want as many stadium battles as you could possibly get to maximize money. So in bigger cities, there might be two gyms that you have to get badges from. There might be two stadiums you have to do because then you get then the people who are wanting money get more money for it. Interesting. On top of that, I really want to see some kind of energy meter of the fans in the gyms. Like the more non-flashy Ooh. moves you do the less energy you get. And so, yeah, you might have beaten the gym, but you're kind of like, oh, you don't fight flashy enough. Whereas yeah. if you do all these big flashy moves, Dynamax as much as you can, yada, yada. That's like, okay, energy meter's super high. Everyone's loving it. You're famous. Everyone loves you. You're the underdog. Yeah, like if you're not using like tactics in your battle, then you're not good. Like you're yeah. if you're just like powerhousing through someone, it's like, wow. You can okay, but it's not flashy. Flamethrower a third time. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Like maybe you're rewarded more for using like lock on zap cannon, whereas instead of just using Thunderbolt, you know? Yeah. That'd be interesting. I'd be, I'd be, I'd be down for that. It like com- combines contests and, and, and gym battles, which would be interesting. I don't yeah. know how people would feel about it. I'd be, I'd be interested to try it out. I think oh, yeah. after a while, I'd get tired of it. Yeah. Um, especially going back and playing through it several times because i'm gonna be playing through this game oh, hundreds yeah. of times. i have both um, pre-ordered i'm gonna be playing through a lot of it yeah i'm gonna be playing through a lot of it yeah i haven't pre-ordered yet but it's coming oh the day game stop um, was like you can i was like you got it <laughs> yeah yeah um so i think my my ideal too is like so we've got these big cities right we, we seem to look like we've got a lot of really big cities do you think we're gonna have like small maybe unmapped towns pattered out throughout the region well, like I, maybe I, that connect the wild areas and, and like throughout the wild area. Maybe there's some smaller towns, like maybe only a couple houses and stuff like that. And uh, maybe there's like a small town, like battle challenge area. That's that. Yeah, that's really interesting because I was thinking about it because it's it's roughly mid industrial revolution, Britain. Yeah. You know, like it's uh, like England it's influenced by it. Yeah. But the thing on, on all, all those old maps, if you ever look up an old map, it's also really fascinating if you look up an Industrial Revolution England map because they only yeah. have – the big cities are mapped out. Everything else around there, like a city like Liverpool, which definitely was tiny way back then. It was around but not big. Mm-hmm. It wasn't even on a map. No one even knew it existed unless you had to ride through it. Mm-hmm. But like London and Birmingham and – um. The one at the top, whatever that one is, I don't know. Yeah, but they they were mapped out, but then the, the little ones weren't, and so yeah, I I could I could totally see them having a a bunch of non mapped little towns, even just like little out of the way houses, like the house in the 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 area where you caught Yamask in Gen mm. three, where you just kind of went around this like a bunch of shit and you could see the unknowns and the yamasks and there was just this one town ta- this one house where you could sleep and it was kind of like a poke center but it wasn't yeah and yeah that's where you could see a lot of that happen i think that'd be cool like seeing some of these smaller towns because right now we've seen a lot of big cities and that's cool and all but yeah i also want to see some smaller towns like what if there's like small towns that maybe you have to make they're almost like qualifiers as sort of right. Like you have to build a rapport before you even battle the gyms and you have to start like at these small towns, like make some leeway through there. Like, and we still get maybe more gyms, but they're like, these are smaller, tur- smaller scale tournaments before you get to enter the big leagues Yeah. Um, that are just around in their local areas and festivals and stuff. And you get like little trophies or you get maybe like, uh, Oh, here's a supply of berries for you guys for, for winning or whatever, you know, like yeah. they've have in the anime. Um, 
things that are off the beaten path, not necessarily that you have to go to, but if you go to your and explore them and meet characters there, you're rewarded for it. Yeah, um, and and uh, I mean, if even if you're like, I want to see it because they didn't do it in. I really had wished they had done it in Omega, Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, and they didn't. I got very upset. Where when you finally beat the Elite Four and you beat that that grandson and you beat the shit out of him because he's a douche and you yeah. win. Go back to the family and go back to the family and be like what's up and they're like oh i guess we were wrong you did beat our son and i was our grandson i was like yeah what's up but that <laughs> what's didn't up? happen so but i want to see a family be like hey leon is gonna beat you because you're not gonna win because he's better and then you know you're like i'm like level my strongest pokemon's level eight probably right now yeah but then you get there and everything's leveled up and you beat him and then you go back they're like well shit <laughs> yeah yeah i guess i guess and- we were wrong and I think that's that can be something that happens because, like you said, like like we both said earlier, the events are televised. Um, they have they have ca- stadium cameras, Rotom drones, like flying around the battle arena, um, to make to make the battles like look really cool and stuff yeah. like that. Um, and and televised events, they're big event, they're huge events they're that are in the region, um, literally. Um, and. I can see that everybody, because even like in the anime, right? In the anime, everybody's watching these televised events. Everybody's watching yeah. the Pokemon League, stuff like that. And it's like, oh, snap, this trainer, this trainer, this trainer. It's like all these people that you met along your way are watching. And it's like, oh, wow. And so like you could go back to them and be like, look at you. You did it. Awesome. And yeah. so stuff like that. It could, um, and you could also have like, since you do have the Rotom phone, we see the Rotom phone. You could get phone numbers again. And what if, you know, the yeah. first phone number you have is just like your mom or your dad or whatever. And then, like, as you meet people, like, I want your phone number. And then, like, when you go in, they're like, well, you're seeing you getting ready to getting ready to play. And so, you know, you first get the one text message from mom saying, we're, we're so happy. We're so, I'm so proud of you. And then you get, like, three text messages when you have, like, Hop is like, I'm watching because I'm watching on this big screen. And then you get, like, a friend mm-hmm, met along mm-hmm. the way. I'm watching mm-hmm. the fight. And then it's at the very end when you're at the champion, you have a bunch of people who are flooding your phone like, hey – Good luck when you mm. when you win. Come to this house, and then you have all these places you have to go to to get like just even recognition. Just being like, "Good job, you did it. That's awesome." Yep, yep. I can see stuff like that, and and because we have the phone, you mentioned that getting phone calls and numbers from people. There might be a social media aspect to all of this. Yeah. Um, Instead like of Twitter, you have it's... to manage like like maybe you have to like you get like followers and stuff support and stuff like that like from spot like and that's like how they gauge your sponsorship qualification it's like yeah. oh i'm getting follows from these trainers and stuff like that because they're and they want to see my progress um and they had um the pokemon the rotom camera or the camera and the poke the rotom decks in sun and moon yeah. maybe there's like an instagram thing and you can take photos of you and your pokemon or whatever or your food or, or your food and stuff like that <laughs> like a little little stupid stuff like that and you like have like a social media presence like you're becoming a yeah. celebrity. Like this is the, uh, the 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 way of becoming a celebrity, um, and stuff like that. I'd Which love to see something cool. like that. And yeah, I think that'd be pretty cool. As as well, I wanted to mention. So, legendary dogs are adorable. I love. They're them. great. Yeah. Though the one with the shield does look a little bit. When I first saw it, I was like, that ah, looks a little bit dumb. But then as I looked at it, it wasn't part of its actual body. It was just an accessory of war. I mean, yeah. how else would a dog wear a shield? Yeah, I get it. Yeah. But then it, but then I had this thing. What if those legendary dogs, because they all, in the trailer, they both, like, hear something and something happens. And they're like, ah. There's something bigger there. Yeah. What if they aren't the real legendaries? Ooh. Because, again, I'm just thinking about this. The box art, the box art they revealed, eh, it's not great. It's not great box art. I mean, we've seen amazing box art for all the other games and this one just kind of it as i actually put the box art leaves a bit to be desired yeah yeah i know it it leaves a bit to be desired but i'm just sitting there thinking i know game freak i know who they are and there's they're gonna take every step they can to not reveal something what if there is something bigger going down and they are they are legendaries but mm-hmm. they aren't the main, main legendaries. They're there, but they are worried about something completely different. And that's the true legendary, the thing you have to stop that is not mm. making anything mm. happen. 
Yeah, with that, I think I think you're onto something. Um, because I also looked at the box art and I was like, that feels very simple. It feels very simple, yeah. very plain, and it doesn't seem like it really embodies what I I kind of imagined the game to look like. Yeah. The the my only argument maybe to support that those are the real things would be like, well, the UI. Look at the UI. The UI is a lot cleaner. It's a lot yeah. smoother, and it's not super fancy. Like you look at some of the UI from the other games and stuff. It's like a little bit fancier. They try to make it stylized and stuff. Yeah. Um, where this is just very much, hey, we got a like a elongated oval and stuff like that, and for yeah. text and text in it. Um, but I don't know. There's definitely something bigger happening. Something's here. gonna happen. There is something bigger happening here. No pun intended on Dynamaxing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but the legendaries know something that's like like those two dogs, uh, Zacian and Zamazenta, which I'm just starting to get used to saying. Yeah. Um. They know something is up. Yeah. They team up at the end of it, which is the first time we've ever seen something like that happen. Usually the legendaries are always fighting. They're always yes. fighting with one another. Um, so something big is ha- happening here. And I don't know what. Um, it could be something with the sky. Who's to say? Dynamax legendary. Ooh. The legendary got hit with a Dynamax thing and it well, it can't revert itself back. And then to beat the that, legendary, you need friends. Raid legendary. Oh my god! Oh my oh god! Oh my god! There are three rivals. There are going to be three rivals. There are going to be three other rivals. And oh, in yeah. order to take down the legendary, you have to team up with your rivals to take on the legendary, and you Dynamax catch it yes. that way. And then you take it to Press Press or Magnolia, and it, she helps and fixes it, and then it loves yeah. it. Yeah. Forever. Yeah, that's I'm calling it right now. There are three rivals, and all three of them you have to team up with all three of them oh for a God. raid battle against the legendary. That would there be so is. good. That would be so good because it would make. I imagine it cinematically too, and it just oh looks amazing. God, like you to go to Dynamax your Pokemon, maybe it's your starter or whatever, and all three of them look up at you, look at back at you, and they're like nodding in approval, and you just go for it. You just yeah, yeah, and you yeet it over. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> You throw it as hard as you can. It goes too far away. Yeah, it's definitely Dynamax because they look up. They look up. Yeah. So something's well, here. I just don't know what we could see. I don't, I don't know, know how, what we could see. I don't know see. how much they did, but there was the leaf spinning up. And so what that meant, so the leaves were spinning up, and then they spin up and go out to the right. Mm-hmm. Now, <laughs> if you know anything about wind, something doesn't just stop and go and keep going up. Obviously, it has to go and then come back down. We don't see any kind of arc. We don't see what would be mm-hmm. an upside down Parabellum. Also, really good movie. If you haven't seen John Wick Parabellum, it's amazing. <laughs> it is amazing. But they, we don't see that arc down. It just goes up. So that makes me lead to that leads me to believe something caused this wind, and this wind is yeah, stronger absolutely. than real wind, and yes. it's throwing things around. The legendary is Dynam- uh, Dynamax Corviknight. There we go. Yes, there we got it. <laughs> also, I wonder because uh, my roommate and I are in disagreement with this. Not not for and not any bad reason, but I just think he thinks that Corviknight won't evolve because it looks like it might not. But mm-hmm. I'm also like, but it could. And okay. to evolve it, you could evolve it into a bigger armored bird. It's a bigger bird, like a like a bald eagle wingspan, mm. or even bigger than that. And then it's got like it, it's got bigger armor and it looks tougher and it's got a bunch of defense, which is mm-hmm. unfortunately where our flying types, a lot of them lack in defense. Mm-hmm. But it could be this big armored bird. See, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'd also disagree that Corviknight will evolve, but I think it will have a pre evolution. Yeah. And I don't know if it's one, a new Pokemon that we haven't seen yet. And I was also thinking about this earlier. What if Murkrow evolves into Corviknight? Yeah, I thought like, about that for a while. As a Galar evolution. But the, like, thing, that, the, thing, that got me, the thing that got me is what would cause um, Murkrow's beak to change color and have that purplish to it and kind of all like recede away? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Like, or what if Corviknight is a final evolution and there's a two-parter? I can see Corviknight being a final. I yeah. think Corviknight's reveal is very much akin to Go-Goat's reveal in X yeah. and Y, where we saw Go-Goat, didn't know Skiddo was going to be a thing. We saw Go-Goat, it's like, oh, it's a standalone goat, grass goat Pokemon. Cool. Um, 
and but it but then eventually we saw the skiddo came out i think it'll be a two stage i don't think it'll yeah. be a three i think it'll be two stages um if it is three it's the first it's the based off of the first bird pokemon that of the root of the game possibly because usually that's the only three stage bird pokemon that we ever get in a region is the the starting root pokemon yeah um so i could see something like that uh but because we do see corviknight in the wild as well in the open area i don't see I don't see uh, Corviknight being a three-stage evolution. I only see it being a two. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm I'm pulling stretches here. Yeah, no, but, um, and and that's that's fine. I think that's the that's the fun of it, right? That's the fun yeah. of all of this is to, to pull okay. out the stretches. Uh, it's but fun to that's, that's my that would be my argument is that we see yeah. Corviknight in the wild. We never see a third base evolution just out in the wild. You know. Yeah. And um, I, I, except for Tyranitar, which is now now I'm not sure. Yeah. I d- oh, yeah. now we see we see Tyranitar walking around in the open area, so I don't know. But we don't see an Axio or a... We don't see a Haxorus walking around. Oh, yeah. Or, or anything, or no, but we do um, see Tyranitar in the desert. Isn't it? It's Papyrus, Axio, and then Tyranitar, right? Am I wrong? For, for what? Uh, for exactly. Tyranitar's um, evolution. Oh, it's Line. it's uh it's uh Larvitar, Pupitar, and Tyranitar. Larvitar, Pupitar, Tyranitar. Yeah. Right. Uh Axew is uh Haxorus's A- first. Axew Haxorus, yeah. Yeah, it's Axew uh Fracture and Haxorus. Yeah. Yeah. I am I am so I am I am I am I am saddened with myself that I didn't remember that. Hey, that's why I'm here. I'm the yeah. Pokemon professor. You are the professor, so yeah, <laughs> well, that's that's all I had for my notes. If there's anything else you had, um, I've got a question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, specifically with Dreadnaw, hmm. um, what do we think about Dreadnaw? Do we think it's a single stage? Do we think it's a an evolution? Do we think it's maybe the pseudo in disguise? It's a. I think it's a. I think it's the first of a two stage evolution. Okay. Because it's it looks strong. But it still has some of that kind of – it's not the basic, not the basic evolution stuff that we would see. But it's got some of the stuff like mm. not everything. There's still a little – it's still a little bit rough. It's got the shell, but it only covers part of its back. Right. And it has the, the chompers, but not – they're not huge. I can definitely see it being, you know, Dreadnought and then like going from Dreadnought and then going into like – um what's the ship that's bigger than a dreadnought i'm not 100 percent sure dreadnought ship hold on <laughs> big battleship <laughs> biggest battleship um here we go. Top five battleships of all time. On the national interest, I'm I am I'm reluctant to believe this is a national interest. This is a national. This is an international interest. Yes. So is the Titanic. Uh, where is it? No, it could be like um. Because Dreadnought, and then I think it's called the Bismarck. The Bismarck, the big German Navy ship. Mm. Bismarck is big. It only lived a little bit, but it was it was a good ass battleship. Okay, I think okay. that's what I'm thinking of. The kind of ship. So but the Bismarck. Yeah. So then it'd be like Dreadnought and Bismarck, not Bismarck. Dreadnought, Bismarck, something like that. I could see that. I could see that. Because then it so goes. So my. My thoughts were that it was going to be – it's the first stage to the pseudo-evolutionary uh, evolutionary line, and it would go maybe, possibly – and this would be very interesting because it would be it would be completely different than they've ever done before, kind yeah. of, because they did with Tyranitar. Um, it would go from uh, Water Rock to Water Steel to Dragon Steel. Oh, my God. Um, by, the, by the end of it. Uh, um. Because it, I think it's going to gain steel type. It's it's they mention iron specifically in its Pokedex entry, yeah. and it's reptilian, and it looks like it can evolve twice into a, possibly a dragon. Oh, and so I'd be cool. down for that. 
But also, it could also stay water or rock all through, and I'd be down for that. Or it's a fossil Pokemon. I could also see that. Or uh, we were also, I was also thinking, what if it had dark type somewhere in there? Ooh, interesting. I could see that. I could see that. It doesn't look like traditional dark type, but not all dark types are traditional. Exactly. There's there's some that don't necessarily look like dark types either. Yeah. Um, yeah, Corviknight, for one, isn't even a dark type, and it looks like it could have been a dark type. It's yeah. a flying steel. It's Skarmory for the yeah. Galar region. <laughs> Um, and I'm just, oh, I'm just, I'm so excited for it. I'm so excited. We got, we got so much information and yet Game Freak is always delivering where they give me more questions than answers. Yeah. They, they answered the questions I wanted to know, but gave me more questions yeah. that I didn't get answers to yet. Um, which is really, really nice. Cause it, it leaves me still excited about the game and I don't want them to answer everything. Honestly, even after this, after this direct, I'd be completely happy not knowing anything else about yeah. the games moving forward and being surprised from 100%. Oh, I know definitely. enough now that I'm 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 buying this game 100% and I don't need to know more. You I the only thing I would maybe need to know to help me would be the starter evolutions and that's maybe it. Maybe not the final but the second stage just so yeah. I know where they're going um and maybe get a better decision. That's the one I want to see cuz I don't want to see the final stages revealed at all. I don't either. Starters. I just want to see either. what their second stage looks like, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um because right now I'm very much on the fence about all three, but I feel like I might be leaning more towards Grookey, uh, more so because I really like the aspect of this this like hammer thing because it uses wood hammer in in the in the trailer. Yeah. Um, and I've never real and I want to see like a really offensive based grass type, like a really strong physically offensive grass type again because we had it with Chestnut, but he was also really slow and kind of bulky. Um, and I'd like to see like a just like a really like all out attacker sort of deal, but I yeah. don't really know who I don't know what we're gonna get. Um, I'm also seeing with these uh stadium battles and with the like final arena that we were that I had said we discussed a little bit because I'm I'm now watching just now watching My Hero Academia, the anime. Mm hmm. And I'm at the sports festival arc, and that just got me thinking what if what if there was a sports festival type thing too? Because there's looks like there's this big emphasis on sports. I mean, you wear a sports uniform. Yep. When you're fighting, what if there's a big sports emphasis when you're at the final place and you are being watched by, you're being scouted by sponsors to, to who's going to sponsor you? And mm -hmm, then as the mm -hmm. biggest, as the biggest, uh, as the biggest fuck you to all the sponsors, be like, I don't need sponsors. I'm my own person. I got famous by myself, doing this myself. I'm going to stay famous myself. Mm -hmm. And then, then there could be like an end game where, yeah, you beat the Elite Four, but now sponsors are sending people after you to beat you and you're just cutting them down and you're still staying yeah. this famous trainer without any sponsorships yeah that i could, could be see another that. aspect to it and with the rotom phone they could allow it to be that um it's like trainers that maybe you faced previously or trainers that uh that are being sent to challenge you or the sponsorships contact you and be like hey you're being challenged by this this trainer Go to the whenever you get the chance. Go to the Pokemon League, and you will face this trainer. Yeah, and they'll be after you. So then the trainer battle for def your title defense gets changed, and you can lose that title and try to yeah. regain it again. Um, you won't have to collect all the badges again. Yeah, but you have to go through the Elite Four again from from bottom up to go and try and get to get them. Oh yeah, and that would just add a whole another awesome aspect to the entire. Yeah, game. it's like oh, I have to hold my title now. Oh, this is going to be interesting. It's going to be fun. Um, and then as well, they could be like, you are being like, they could send, instead of being like kind of nice about it, like if you're being challenged by this guy, get to the, get to the uh, arena immediately. And you're just, whatever you're doing, if you're not in the middle of a battle, whatever you're doing, it doesn't matter. It's like, Hey, basically it goes black screen. You fast travel to there. And it's like, you're fighting now. Like yeah. Pokemon on appealed up and all that. Yeah. I don't know if I'd, so, I'd be okay with them interrupting what I was doing yeah. to, to go defend my title. Because, like, what if I was shiny hunting? Like, if I'm in the middle of a catch combo and or chain or whatever and shiny hunting and they call me and break me out of it, yeah, I'd be really pissed. Um, I, I don't see it as happening. I don't, I mean, I don't see it as happening. It was just, yeah. I, I would, I think it'd be cool flavor though. Yeah. Yeah. It'd it's be cool, cool flavor. About flavor -wise. If they could be like, you have to get there immediately, even though it's like RPG rules, you don't have to be there immediately, but you have to get yeah. there at some point. They tell you you have to get there immediately. Yeah. And then if, if you go there immediately, then it's like, cool. Then they're, they're like, I expect your challenge. And if you wait like a week and you go there and then they're like, what took you so long? You know, you're like, listen, I was, I was busy berries, bro. Like, 
bro, I'm busy. I'm, I got, <laughs> do you know how much shit I have to do? <laughs> my life doesn't revolve around you or yeah, whatever. Because you know? you're not my sponsor, and no one is. Bam. I'm my sponsor. Yeah. Bam. <laughs> um, I think it's going to be interesting to see how they take it because there's just a lot of possibility here. Um, I think we're going to get a moment. If if I think Leon will probably end up being a an antagonist of some sort. Um, and we'll have to face him at the end to once and for all get rid of this stuff for 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 from Pokemon battling or whatever as a as a thing. Um, and then Professor Magnolia is like, "No, we can actually make it so it's safe." And blah blah blah. Um, yeah. And then um, Leon, I'll have a change of heart. Something something is gonna happen between Leon and Sonia. I know it. It's there. They have history together. They make it a point to say they tre- they were rivals growing up. Yeah. You know. Um, I'd also like to see, like, excuse me, Leon be the you know, the, the depressed antagonist. Like, yeah, he's he's your antagonist. He's not happy about it. He's not happy no, he about doesn't. what he's doing. But yeah. he needs to, you know, he needs to put food on the table. What if there are no parents at at Leon's house? So the only thing, yeah, they could have was... lost. They could have lost their parents. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and Leon's like, I gotta support my brother. I gotta make sure that he's okay. And that's yeah. why maybe Hop wants to be just like his brother. Yeah. Um, so that he doesn't have to be taken care of anymore and stuff like that. Yeah. Maybe there might be a minor bit of resentment towards his brother for something like yeah that, that like he liked his brother so that his parents would be proud of him or something. um I don't know but I'm interested to see because they they said that it sounds like they're going to be more rivals. Yeah. I'm curious as to who they're going to be. Um, and I'm very excited to see that. Um, yeah, because they, they do mention. Better. One of your rivals. They they make that a big point. They make that very very yeah. clear, and I'm down for that. Um, I don't oh, yeah. mind having multiple rivals. They've been having multiple rivals since Gen Five, and it's been fine. Um, I wish they. I just hope that they get the chance to flesh them all out. Um, so I have to. I have to tell Sonya. I'm so sorry. Yeah, you are waifu material, but that spot's been taken from me already. Yeah, yeah. By Rosa from. <laughs> from black from, and white too. yeah oh god i love her she's wonderful oh man see it's like i'm i'm torn between if i want to play as the male character or the female character because i also find the female character and and in, 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 um sword and shield to be like very much my type yeah in that in that aspect and i'm like oh geez what do we do and then the female character is probably going to be another one of your rivals I can see that. Yeah. I can see her being a character in the game. Like the, the whichever one you didn't pick is also the rival in the game. Oh shit. Okay. Well, hold on. <laughs> so now we have it. So now we have um a rival of yours is Sonya. A rival of yours is Hop. Like, so you have Sonya who yes. you were saying something about um something about Sonya. Yeah, she's waifu material blah yeah. whatever, you know. Yeah. Sonya, Hop, female trainer. Or male trainer, whichever one. Male yep. trainer. That's your four man team for the legendary. Yeah, yeah. Or it I think could that's be, gonna be a thing. Yeah. I could also see it being that it's uh like the raid battle for again against the uh the uh, um the legendary if it if it happens. I'd like to see that happen. I think that'd be cool. Oh, um yeah. it could be it could be you, Hop, maybe Sonia, and Leon. Yeah. Like Leon has a redemption arc and stuff like that. Yeah. Maybe like some characters might redeem themselves. It'd be really cool. It'd be really cool to see. There's so many things I want to see in this, and there's so many more things I have to ask now. And now I'm like, oh god, now I'm I'm asking more questions than I was before. Oop. Mm-hmm. There we go. I think we're back. Okay. Cool. Um, I think with this game in general, just in just in general, what I'm really hoping is that we're in for a really strong, really good experience yeah. with the games. Um, and I'm gonna be happy. I think whichever way this turns out, plot wise, because I think they're gonna do something interesting. Yes. Um, they have a lot of stuff that. So I think like I like that Pokemon is taking some daring chances with their plot and their characters that they're making. Um, they're setting up the stage. For a lot of craziness to happen, um, yeah. that makes a lot of sense, um, and would be very cool for an RPG story. 
Um, and they're emphasizing that these are the Pokemon role-playing games, the Pokemon RPGs. Like, these yes. are the RPGs that you've been wanting or whatever. Um, I'd be so happy to see it. Yeah, Sun and Moon took some leaps with, with making the Aether Foundation uh, evil, eventually basically corrupt. Yeah. Um, they've taken leaps like that, um, just trying to twist up stories. And um, one thing that I didn't mention that I thought up on um, yesterday was that because the open area exists, um, I forgot about Ultra Beasts for a while. Yeah. Um, and I think the Ultra Beasts are going to be just random. They're going to be Ultra Wormholes that pop up throughout the wild area. And they'll drop down like into the field. Like if you go near it, a cutscene will trigger and the Ultra Beast will pop through. Yeah. And you'll be able to battle an Ultra Beast there. Oh, I could see it. 100%. I can see it 100%. Like, cu- a cutscene triggers, and all of a sudden, Buzzwall, like, crashes through, yeah. and, like, Superhero poses down into the ground, and you see him, and then he just charges at you. Battle screen initiates, and he's standing there, and you throw your Pokemon out. And, dude, it, here it is. Or what I what I would love to see is for something like that, where it's, uh, it's a flawless change. So, like, it comes down, he runs at you, and as he runs, he just kind of stops, and then there's not even, like, a battle start screen your character just throws the pokemon out and yeah you're just switching start. into it yeah that'd be cool yeah. i'd be into that i'd be into that i still um, want to keep I the battle screen Booker to come into the game post game i oh, fully expect I definitely do oh yeah he's got to be um, somewhere and it'll be probably the same thing post game hey lookers around for the ultra beast and whatnot yeah and it'd just be something cool that i'd, I'd really like to see mm-hmm mm-hmm I'd be really into this. I, I'm like, I'm just super excited to play it now. I'm like, I'm ready. Uh, wake me up when it's November fifteenth. I'll I'll get it. Um, and yeah, that's kind of like where I'm at right now. Yeah, same. I'm just I'm so excited to go pick it up. I mean, I'm gonna be there on midnight at midnight. I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna be ready if they're doing a midnight mm-hmm. release. If they're not doing a midnight release, I'm gonna be driving up to that GameStop. I'm gonna get there at eight a.m. and I'm gonna stand and wait. Mm-hmm, and when I mm-hmm. get it home, I'm going to immediately plug it in go on stream and go yeah um i think right now the the plan is for me is that uh my girlfriend and i both want pokemon sword or play pokemon sword um so i think i'm gonna get the physical for pokemon shield i'll pre-order that um and if she wants to get sword she can buy sword or maybe i'll buy it for her we'll see Mm -hmm. um and then i'll pre-download pokemon sword on my switch uh, as a digital copy um so then eventually we'll have both um both physicals and then at midnight on my switch if i can if they launch it there i will play it day one on stream like yeah. that have it finish have it update or whatever have you and go <laughs> yeah no, i'm gonna i'm gonna be putting it like i'm gonna be starting the stream when the download is starting like when the yeah. whole download i'm just gonna have it up and i'm just gonna talk to chat like yep dude it's gonna be awesome it's gonna be great. I don't know. I don't know how I'm gonna do this yet. I've, I'm like, there's part of me that like I want to YouTube record it, like record it for YouTube as my regular playthrough, yeah. and then I want to do the Nuzlocke on stream, like start the Nuzlocke a week later. But at the same time, I'm like, but I want, but because that once the max uh, max raid battles became a thing, I'm like, how cool would it be to be on stream and then people who are playing alongside with me come up and are like, hey, let's join you in the raid battle, like whatever, you know? Yeah. Um, oh, I'm so excited for it! And I could do a handful of those and then move on and and catch some stuff. Like I'm, I'm just so excited to see like what I'm gonna. I, I don't know what I'm gonna do now. My whole plan was thrown out the window, Pokemon. Yeah. Thank you very much. I'm actually putting. I'm um, today after after this video. I'm putting on. I'm finding a timer, a countdown app, and I'm gonna be putting on the countdown for Pokemon Sword and Shield. Ooh, nice! And I mean, everything is gonna. I'm gonna be so fucking ready. I'm I'm hype. I'm very five, very hyped for it. Five months, nine days. Five months, nine days. Wow. Yeah. It's going to go by quick. We got oh the summer. God. We got a lot of stuff coming up between now and then. Uh, we got a Link, uh, Link, uh, sorry, uh, Link's Awakening coming out. Um, yeah. Super Mario Maker 2 is coming out. Um, we've got uh, uh, Luigi's Mansion 3 is probably going to come out before then. But I think yeah. Pokemon Sword and Shield are going to be Nintendo's big like bl- like hit seller this year. Yeah. That's like the one that they're going to push. Well, that, and then and it looks have, like it. I think they have Wind Waker and Twilight Princess going to Switch this year as well. Did they say that yet, or or is yep. it just speculated? Really? I think Where'd they, they say did. that? Um, let me. There's a thing I saw for it. Cause I I'm surprised nobody's been talking about it. Cause I follow like Game Explain and stuff, and they haven't said anything about it. It might just be a rumor. Um, but hey, we're getting stuff at E3, and E3 is next week. Yeah. Um, and Pokemon Sword and Shield are going to be playable at at E3 next week, and I'm like. 
I'm jealous that I don't get to play Sword and Shield. But I'm hoping that they release a demo at, at home for for those at home. They release like the the Sword and uh, the the E3 demos um, at home. Yeah, because I would love yeah. to play it. And as long as they don't put and my my hope hope is that they don't have the entirety of the Pokemon games or on the entirety of all these games on there so that when people data mine them, they don't find everything and those leaks pop up. Yeah. Um, that would okay, be the so worst it, it is a It is a rumor that has not been confirmed or denied by Nintendo, but gotcha. there has been, from various different sources, been speculated that probably... If Link's, Awakening, if Link's Awakening does well, yes, they're going to probably have it. Yeah. I imagine that if they're going to bring uh, Wind Waker and Twilight Princess over to the Switch, it'll be the HD ports that they made for the yeah. Wii U. Um, it's just going to be those re-released. Yeah. And, and I'm then, fine with that. I'm also, I also want the, A Link to the Past released on Switch. It's my favorite Zelda game. Please. I think at E3 this week coming, yeah. we'll we'll hear about the Nintendo uh, Super Nintendo Virtual or, or uh, Nintendo Switch Online app, or whatever that'll yeah. come out. I love because forever too. ago there was data mines of updates on the Switch, and there was the NES controllers, and there was also the Super Nintendo controllers. Yeah, um, that they had. So I think we'll get something like that. Well, there was actually uh, I read a thing with with uh, someone from Nintendo that was like, <sighs> Nintendo would be stupid not to put the Super Nintendo stuff on the Switch. I think so. Yeah, they it they're like so. it'd be a dumb idea not to because so many people would buy the online already just for that, and then with the Pokemon stuff, that's gonna overload their online. They're just gonna get their their online computer. servers are gonna get loaded this yeah. year coming between all the Smash DLC between um whatever games are online from uh from E3 if they have Nintendo Switch online with uh or if they have the Super Nintendo stuff if they have po- what, Pokemon Sword and Shield online stuff happening like it's going to be loaded the, the, yeah. the, they're going to they're going to have a lot Mario Kart 8 is already out and if they announce another Mario at E3 or we've got so much we've got so much yeah. um not so much Borderlands 3 I think is either out or just out or now out soon yeah yeah and so oh my god <laughs> there's a lot right now but hey i look forward to it it's gonna be cool so do i, I mean, yeah. 2019 is a good year for gaming and pokemon sword and shield is definitely my game of the year definitely it looks like it it looks like it's gonna be the game to get this year i am so excited for it, it looks like it's gonna be one of the biggest and if you're not a nintendo fan oh. it looks like it's gonna be a big It might be a big starting point for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And I, yeah. think, I think that's where we're going to see most people come in to the series is through Sword and Shield. Because a lot of people came in at Sun and Moon and they just kind of didn't like it. It wasn't what people had told them it was like. And so then I think Sword and Shield is going to be the one that will bring so many people in. Because Let's, so. Let's Go Eevee brought a lot of the Pokemon Go community to the Switch. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, we want to play a core game. And then... Yeah, you get Sword and Shield, and there might be a big overhaul. I think so. I think so. Um, because uh, actually, since we had last talked too, they had the Pokemon press conference, yeah. which released Pokemon Home and Pokemon Sleep, and yeah. so like they announced all those. Um, and Pokemon Home allows you to transfer from Pokemon Bank to Pokemon Home, from Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee to Pokemon Home, and from Pokemon Go to Pokemon Home, yeah. and you can interchange from Sword and Shield to Pokemon Home. Um. So all the other ones are transfers transferable one way, yeah, and everything else is it, and Sword and Shield is back and forth. So I don't know what they plan on doing for Pokemon in this in this case because all three of those games have different mechanics in them, where Pokemon Bank Pokemon are all like there's EVs and IVs and all that stuff. Yeah. Pokemon Go has CP, uh, and Pokemon uh, Let's Go has AVs. Yeah. So it's like, I don't know how they plan on making all of this work. I don't know. It, um, it, it would probably be, you know... Uh, um, I just um, hope it's not all yeah. re-rolled stats, because it's not going to yeah. feel like you brought your Pokemon up, you know? Yeah, it's going to be like, oh, you have a CP 80 million. Well, it's got one good IV, and you're like, bitch? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it should reflect yeah. what you've got already yeah. going in. Um. 
and then just bring it. I, I don't know how they plan on making the mechanics for for Let's Go. They haven't released anything about that yet. We don't know anything yeah. about CP. We don't know anything about that. Uh, but what we do know too is which I found interesting. Um, Milo looks like the first gym leader. He does. Um, it, it looks like it's the first. It's the first area. It looks like it's the first area that you reach in the game that has a gym. Um, so reason to be that it's the first gym leader. But yeah. to be fair, Generation One had the first. Uh, Viridian City had the gym, but you couldn't get it to the uh, very end. Yeah. And your Pokemon, uh, his Pokemon was like level twenty yeah. something or nineteen, and your your Pokemon was like level fifteen, sixteen. Yeah. For the first gym. For the first gym. Yeah. That's so. that's. That's strong. That's like that that's, seems like it's going to be challenging already. Yeah, I'm wondering how long the first initial part of this game is, and how long it takes to get between areas. Like, what I, is there to do between? I just hope it's not a long ass tutorial. I hope you can skip the tutorial this time. You can actually yeah. skip those because it's like, yeah, I I get I keep them in obviously for new players. Keep them in there so they can learn, understand what they're doing, but. For people who have been playing the game their entire lives, yeah, we know what we're doing. If you could just be like, do you need a tutorial on Pokemon? You say no. They're like, all right, bye. Yeah, I mean, I think the idea still is you walk through some of the similar steps and they'll be like, do you want me to teach you how to, how to catch Pokemon? Do you think you got it on your own? Or do you want to figure it out on your own? And it's like, yeah. I'll figure it out on my own. Do you um, want to know where the Mart is? And like, no, I got it. Do you want to know where this is? No, I got it. And then it's like, okay. And it's like, or you walk into the first town and Sonya is like, hey, uh, I know this place is different from this. Do you want me to show you around? And it's like, no, that's okay. I got it. And it's oh, like, okay. shit. You know, because you always move into the Pokemon games nowadays. You're always moving to them. What if you get to pick which region you move from? That'd be cool. Yeah. I'd I be mean, down for that. It'd be a little I bit I mean, I don't know if we're moving in from anywhere because it looks like we might be pretty solidified in where we, where we start. But who's yeah. to say? But like again, in like in in Alola, the in the Alolan region, you moved from what Kanto, right? Yeah. You moved from Kanto to to Alola, and you in in Black and White, you started there. Black yeah. and White, I think you started there. Uh, Gen six, you moved. I think. Gen three, you moved. Gen three, you moved. Gen, Gen four, four, you were you were there. But you had you you were there, but I'm pretty sure. There was. I think you started at like very young. You moved. You were there yeah. for a few years, though. You've been there for a while. Yeah. Um, Gen two, I think you also moved, but yes. like it was yeah. like it was a while. Like it was like it had been a while as well. Yeah. Uh, and Kanto, you just started there. Yeah. Because they didn't have um, any other regions. Yeah, they didn't have any other regions. Um, I don't know. I I'd like to see that the trainer just is from it. Like is from there. Like I I want like be there from the galar region i'd be down for that yeah. um because i feel like that's something they don't play with yeah um i think my biggest gripe with sword and shield so far and this seems to also be this the gripe for everybody that i've heard from so far why are we still choosing between a palette of eight character models yeah for our character creation in the beginning why can't we just go with sliders to get skin shades that we want yeah. uh to get eye color that we want hair color we want hair type that we want um and maybe a set of early clothes that are yeah. that we can choose between i be i mean i'm fine if we have the same set of clothes for whatever but allow me to change what my character looks like if i yeah. want to give my character glasses or if i want to give my character like uh uh like like say i want like my curly hair or like short hair or long hair or what have you maybe my build is a little different you know yeah i want to be as like buff as milo hard, yeah like what if i wanted to look like milo what if i was role-playing as milo's twin yeah and i want to be a buff boy <laughs> i want to be a buff boy with a child face yeah and no nose it's actually funny he does have a nose it's just very well hidden in his freckles because yeah. they use the same color for the shadow of his nose as they do the freckles that are around it. So it looks like he has no nose, but it's it's like in a very few, a couple of frames, like if you look, it's like, oh, there's his nose. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's very funny. It looks but very he looks odd. like a ditto. Yeah, he does. Did you see Detective Pikachu? I did. I, I loved did. it. Oh, I, lo I saw it twice I loved, already. Oh, I loved it. I loved it so much. I want to see it more, but I don't have money to go see it <laughs> anymore. Yeah, we, get, we go on Tuesdays because we get like $5 movies on Tuesdays. Oh, that's popcorn. great. 
That's great. But, yeah, so that's that's all I had. I think that's all I have too that I can think yeah. of for right now. All right, this was another good talk. Another yeah. almost two hour talk. I think this is shorter than the last one, though. Yeah, it the is. Last one was and like also, three, there's a hours. couple, there's a couple pieces in there I got to cut out, so it might come down a little bit. Yeah, but this is gonna be pretty raw. I'm not gonna cut out too much. I'm just gonna cut out cool. the parts where some weird shit happened with Discord. Cool, sounds good. Cool. But it's been, as always, it's been great, Professor. It's been a pleasure. Thank <laughs> you so much for having me again. Oh hell yeah! And if we get, if there's any more information, we'll try and do this again. We'll try again. Yeah, I yeah. think this will be fun. But Hell I look yeah. forward to E3 next week. That's going to be yes. a thing. I'm, uh, I'm doing D&D on Sunday, and I'm running my Ooh. campaign. So I don't know if that's going to happen. I don't know if we're going to run through D&D. So, I mean, it'd be a consensus.